IIP 2020 organized by Department of Biotechnology, ILM College of Engineering and Technology, Greater Noida. Dr. Abdul Aziz is a profound researcher and is an expert of plant biotechnology and stress biology. He is an expert of genome editing tool Multiplex CRISPR Cas9 and large scale cloning and transformations experience in several model plants like Populus, Banana, Arabidopsis, Tobacco, Tomato, etc. As a proud alumni of CSR and BRI, he joined as a postdoctoral researcher at Umia Plant Science Center, Umia, Sweden, and worked for four years. He also served as a scientist position, a senior scientist position at Jan Irrigation System Limited, Maharashtra, India, for more than three years. And currently, he is working as a senior research investigator at the School of Forest Resources and Environmental Sciences, Michigan Technological University, Michigan, USA, uh, since July 2017. Dr. Abdul Aziz has published more than 15 publications in a very high impact journal such as Nature Communication, Science, Plant Molecular Biology, uh, uh, Physiological Plant Era, Journal of Botanical Research, Virus Disease, Physiological and Molecular Biology of Plants, to name a few. I welcome Dr. Abdul Aziz uh, to, to give a talk and share his idea and pearl of wisdom with all of us. Welcome, sir. Thank you so much, Avino, for uh, such a kind uh, introduction. It's an honor to, I think, talk and share some of the research with you all. And I think it's a very nice opportunity for me to, to connect you all again. Because when we do science, I think it's, we get disconnected sometimes when you were when you were teaching and these things. So you probably get a chance to connect more people. So for me, it's an honor to present and share some of the work I'm doing. So I think I need to share the slides, right? Or just have to talk. Uh, know. Yes, sir, you can share your slides. Uh, it is, uh, I think you know that there is a share screen. Uh, yes, yeah. yeah. So can you see now? See? Sir, it's visible. Okay. So in this talk, I will give a brief introduction of uh, in biotechnology. Uh, as we all know, I expect from you all that we know that what is this genetically modified organisms and biosafety. So we know that the genetically modified organisms have some, apart from this, all uh, the importance they have to improve the agricultural trades in other industrial application, in medicine, in medicals. Uh, they have these side effects like, uh, and uh, people are concerned about the biosafety. So I will, try to the technique we are using and the tools to con how we can uh, have a safety to restrict the gene to get transferred to the natural population so they don't get contaminated. So I will be talking about what is the containment and why it's important. So as we know that uh, as a scientist uh, and as a responsible scientist, uh, we should take the action, even if there is no solid uh, evidence that available that these genes will transfer and get into the natural system to contaminate it. So it is our responsibility to take action. So, and it based on some evidence that the people have said that these genes, like then people when they are working on this uh, weeds, they are generating the weeds like. Uh, have a resistance varieties. 
So there is a concern that the gene may get transferred into the natural weeds and it may take over the, your agricultural crops. So that will cause, that is called super weeds. So that's one of the major concerns in agricultural feeding, especially. And, and the other, it, there is another way to like through the pollens and other way that it get, uh, uh, to get transferred to the natural system to contaminate it. So before I proceed, I will just like to tell you that uh, I'm a, working on plant molecular biology. So I will take the examples from the plants and I talk, it's especially I will talk about the forest trees. And I'm talking this containment, this technically is applicable to only to the, uh, the plants which get propagated vegetatively, where the flowering and these things has no much important. And so how we can restrict the flowering and transfer of the genes through the flowering system and to improve the productivity as well as to protect the transfer uh, gene contamination in the natural systems. So what are the strategies of this containment technology? So whoever this, uh, are aware of these plant systems. So there are several steps where we can check this transfer of genes by using the biotechnological tools. So like one can act on this floral to manipulate the flowering process to generate flowering sterility. So these gen genes don't get transferred to the natural system. And the other level one can act is the seed level. So play with the, the seed, uh, modify the, the seeds so they don't get the dispersed into the natural systems. Or the other two systems that you can also uh, play with the fitness of the transgenic so they don't get overcompete with the, their natural systems. So, here I'm going to take the examples of the floral sterility and why it's so important. So if you see the floral sterility is, will be on the top of uh, the pyramids, which is uh, responsible for the transfer of the gene in the natural systems. So if one decides to target at this at flowering level, I think is the best upper, uh, the way to check the transfer of the gene in natural ecosystem. And the other important is that, as we know that these plants uh, spend a lot of energy to make, the, to make the flower. So if you restrict the flowering, so that energy, like more than 50% energy, they can use in the vegetative growth where it's important. In the case of forest trees, in other where the flowering is not re required, you can see the 50% they can increase in the biomass. So in the forestry especially is very important where they use for this biofuel. So you can increase the biofuel, you can increase the wood production and so on and so. And the other in urban forestry, uh, when you act on the flowering, so you can avoid the spread of the pollens. So in this way, so you can have a very model plants for the urban forestry in this way. So to understand and to act at this level, you first think we need to understand the me mechanism behind and the gene responsible in this pathway. So here I am taking the examples of the flowering pathway in Arabidopsis. As we all know, the Arabidopsis is one of the most studied model plants. So here uh, there are several, like four major flowering pathway, like photoperiodic, vernalization, atomation, and jubilin. I'm not going to talk about, I know that there are very diverse group here. So I'm not going to detail on it, but so all this pathway, they convert on a, one of the gene that is called flowering locust T, FT genes. And this, we also call it as a flowering, florigen. So they converge on the FT and then FT is a central regulator 
of the genes. So they regulate downstream floral meristem genes and then organ identity genes and then at flower development take place. So if you closely look the flower of the Arabidopsis plant, we have a corpel, the innermost layer, then we have a stamens, the male part, and then we have a petals, and then we have a sepals. So basically there are four world of the flower, and this is a very typical flower. So now here I will take the example of floral meristem genes and how to select these genes and why they're important. So since we know that these floral meristem genes, they are very specific to the flower and they are responsible for floral uh, development of flower. And they are downstream component in this flowering pathway. So here I think it's important to tell you that the more you act at the downstream of the pathway, so specifically you can manipulate the flowering things. So suppose on the top of the flowering pathway, there are some uh, master regulators which involve in the several other developmental pathway apart from the flowering. So if you manipulate the other top components, you will also have a effect in other developmental process. So I think it's important to select the downstream component and for that, the floral meristem genes are best target to modify the flowering, to create sterility in the plants, to avoid the spread of genes in the natural ecosystem. So to understand the flowering here, I think there is a very famous flower ABC models. So what is this ABC model is like group of genes that is called A group, B group, and C group. So they have given is a common name, ABC model. And how this group of genes, they involved in the development of flower. So here is the flower, you see the typical flower of the Arabidopsis where you have a fold world from inner to outer outer to inner. So you see a group of genes that involved in the development of sepal. A plus B here, the group of genes, they are involved in the development of the second world that is petals. And B plus C genes involved in the development of stamens. And then C group of genes responsible for the development of corpels, the innermost and the female part. And here are the sum of the examples of the flowering genes, which comes under the category of these class. Suppose A class genes are like AP2, and that is called uh, Apatella1 and Apatella2. And the B class genes are the Apatella3 and Pistillata genes. They comes under the category of B class genes. And the C class genes are Agamas. So these genes are typically responsible for the development of, as you see, the corpel, the innermost female part. So these, the group of genes, they act together and responsible for the development of flower. So here I will take the, some, the known examples, the actual mutants available in case of Rabidopsis. And when you manipulate it, how the flowers will look like. So suppose if you target A class of genes, so when I say here target means you want to silence it using the biotechnological tools. So when you silence this group of genes, so and since I already told you that these are the genes responsible for the development of sepals, the outer world, when you knock out these genes, so the flower will look like this because they have no have clear sepals. When you knock out B class of genes here, since B are responsible for the development of two layer, the sepals and the petals. So they don't have clear sepals and petals. And that's very similar way when you crop the third group of genes, that is just that is C. 
So since C are also act with the B, they form the third, and the C itself form the, the female part, the innermost layer. So when you knock out this, so you will have like something like this. You have no male and female organ, only the sepal and petal things. So these are the mutants available in our abdopsis to show you that when you modify this class of genes, and then you have an opportunity, you have an option here to select what and what level you want to manipulate. Suppose you want to manipulate the stamen, then you can target B class genes or C class genes. So you will have a still, you will have a flower, something like this. And if you remember these, there are several flowers examples in the rows. There are several the varieties are available where there is no actual stamen or pet, uh, corpel, only the petals. So that is the requirement of this in this case. So they targeted these genes and they have only petals and sepals so that the, we need in the case of flower. So now I will take uh, the examples of some of the, uh, the genes which are used to target the floral meristem genes to create the sterility. So here is the simplified version of the flowering pathway. So what happened? You get the flowering signal. As I said, there are several signaling pathways. This could be photoperiod, it could be hormone, it could be uh, sugar, any other signaling path, and it trigger the FT genes, since it's a main flowering component. And it regulate the floral meristem and identity gene which are responsible for the uh, induction of the basically to the flower. And these floral meristem genes, they act downstream genes, which are actually uh, responsible for the uh, growth of the, some of the organs. And eventually the flower development take place. So in this pathway, now you, as I am talking about, I will show you to target this flowering meristem genes to create the sterility. So when you target this floral meristem, you will have no flower. And if you want to act downstream genes, because these flowering meristem genes, they, they also may act in some other pathway. So you will have some pleiotrophic effect. So the other option is you can act the downstream component, the actual genes where functional genes were responsible for the development of organ. So in this case, the flower will appear, but the flower will be not sterile. It will not making pollen and other uh, sexual organs. So as I said, the flower is the main source to contaminate the natural ecosystem if it's a transgenic. So I think this is the best thing to target, to have a flower, but there is no pollen. So here I'm taking a ex particular example of leafy. This is a floral meristem identity gene. And there is another gene called Apatella one So they act together to regulate the downstream genes, that is floral organ genes to regulate the flower development. So here, what are the, the tools we have to modify the genes. So here I'm specifically talking about like, if you over, as I said, it's a flowering gene. So if you overexpress under some constitutive promoter, so you will have a very early flowering that we call precocious flowering. But in this case, I'm talking about to create floral sterility. So here, if you silence these genes, by using the biotechnological tools we have, you can have no flower, actual flower. So here, just I want to mention here, there are several ways to silence the genes, like you, the most common technology we were using in PhD, in our PhD when I was working, the antisense technology that was very popular at the time. So we are using to silence the genes. 
And then there are advanced version RNAi games, and then there is the miRNA technique. And then now we have a CRISPR technologies to specifically target the genes to silence the genes, knock out the genes. So this here we uh, this is the example used by RNAi silencing. So they silence these genes when there is no leafy. So you see there is no flower development, only leafy like structure. And the name came from this leafy because the mutant plants they have only leaf like structure. So this is how this gene got the name. So if there is no flower, means there is no contamination in the systems. Now I will talk about the forestry, taking the example of poplar, since I'm working in this poplar for more than 10 years. So if you look closely, look the poplar flower, it's a dioecious tree. That means it has two male and female plants, separate plants. And these flowers has a parent, parent cap. That means what the sepals, and there is no separate sepal and petals. They are fused together. And this fused structure is called parent. And these flowers, they have an inflorescence. They form catkins. So in these pictures, there's the silence, this leafy using RNAi techniques. And as you can see in the pictures, when they silence this leafy, and this is the normal male flower. You have a normal and fully developed stamens, as you can see in the red color. Whereas in the transgenic poplar, where there is no leafy, they have no stamens. They have only the stamen-like structures, no functional stamens here. So these plants were sterile plants by targeting the leafy genes, that is floral male stemmate genes. So here I will talk about the my work, what very similar in one of the projects I was doing in the same technology, because here in the forestry in the US when I'm working, there is a big scope to generate uh, urban trees for urban forestry, where you don't have uh, where you have a plants with no pollen and growing well. So here we targeted uh, the another gene that is called sterile hepatella one. This is a box protein. And this is the uh, schematic representation of this gene. It has uh, some functional domain and here the start sites. So in this case, what I did, I used the CRISPR-Cas9 to knock out these genes. And why I'm showing you this, because I was talking about the floral meristem genes there on the top. Now I'm talking about the genes which are acting uh, specifically to the flowers. And this work was uh, inspired from the Arabidopsis work because there was a report in Arabidopsis where they targeted these genes. The mutant plants had no flower. So, so we tried to use the, the, uh, this gene as a tool to generate the containment technology to have uh, trees with sterility, flower sterility. So what we did, we targeted, like generated two targets here, and we used this CRISPR-Cas9 technique. And you see after mutation, there is a, uh, the stop go down here because this part is got deleted. So there is a no functional protein in the transgenic plants. So when we grown these plants and tested, we have found that you see when you, it's an inducible system because these are the trees, they take like several years, 10 to 12 years to produce the flowering. So we have a developed here, a inducible system where you can induce flowering in these trees whenever you want, give a heat shock and they will produce the flower and then you can test. Otherwise there is no way to test the flowering or you have to wait for several years. So these are the wild type plants where we have intact the functional genes and they're making, started making catkins. 
And these here in the right side, you see the one copy of the genes is got mutated, knocked out. This is your heterozygous allele. And you can see there, there is no cat kinet call at all. So these plants now they're ready for the test in the actual system for the field trial. And in the, our laboratory condition, we have seen no flower at all, complete sterile plants. And the same strategy we also applied and the male, this is the female plants. So which applied in the female male plants. And as you can see the mutant plants here, they don't make any catkin here. Whereas if you see in the normal control plants, after induction, they making catkin, functional flower and mutants light are completely. So in this way, by using this technique, uh, by knock out this uh, sterile epitel of one genes, we specifically, and, and this is very important result for here, and it's very, uh, has a commercial application because it's going to, for the urban forestry here after the field trial. So this work is now is going to be the field trial and I hope it will work. So if it work, then probably we'll have a trees for urban forestry with no pollen and no pollen allergy. So now I was talking about the genes of flowering related genes to target to state the sterility. Here I, I want to show you the another technique what you can use, not the gene, but the other technique called floral ab ablation. We can induce the cell death in the flower. I will talk about little how it works to make the death plants. So here is the general strategy. And this is the main general strategy for any gene to get expressed. So here you have a coding genes. In this case, uh, you, you can use any toxin genes which can cause cell death. And here you have a promoter sequence that we call five string regulatory sequences. So when the promoter of these genes is active, it can regulate the expression of these genes and make mRNA and then make proteins and when these proteins expressed, and because this is a specific protein promoter for the flower, so it only express in the flower. When these toxic protein is specifically expressed in the flower, so it's caused death of the flower, and it will not affect the other development of the plants. So this is how it works. So here is the example, like to test the specificity of the expression, tissue specific expression of this motor by using this. And this is a very common technique to test that, okay, this particular gene is specifically expressing in particular tissue. So in this case, the promoter, the floral, um, popular floral gene promoter is PTD genes, which fuse with the gas and you can see this gas is specifically expressing the gas in the flower part. So the, in the actual system, this promoter will be used uh, for the expression of the toxic genes here, that is DTA, ribosome inactivating protein. So when you fuse these genes under this promoter and express, uh, here express in the tobacco plants. So, as you can see, there are here, there are two ex uh, examples like this. Toxic gene was expressed in the constitutive promoter. So that expressed everywhere. So here you see this tiny plants because this is expressing everywhere. So it also affect the overall development of the plants. Whereas when you, they express this toxic gene under a specific under flowering, uh, floral specific promoters, it only affect the flowering parts. You see, these plants are growing normally and it's not, they are not making flower. 
So this techniques is also useful for the plants where we need vegetative part, using vegetative parts like we are using as a biofactory to express some antibodies and some proteins in the leaves, in the roots. So these techniques are useful. And I said in the earlier for the forestry and other plants, oh, you, you can use the other techniques. So the, yeah, this is, these are the, some of the, my, the work we were doing in the popular and other general techniques, what we can use to create the flower sterility in the plants to avoid the spread of transgenes in our natural ecosystem. So they will not contaminate it. And at the same time, we can use to have to improve the traits of our agricultural or commercial plants to make it sustainable. So this is about my talk. How we know? So uh, now the session, sir, you have. Uh... Yes, so it's still time. What are you saying? OK. So the session is now open for questions. Uh, yeah. Sir, uh, sir we, we, you can proceed for uh, 10 minutes more, sir. One of the students is asking about CRISPR technology and how it works. OK. So I think I don't have slide for it. It's better if I would have slides somewhere. So basically, in CRISPR, this is a uh, RNA-based technology. Because in the previous, people were using protein-protein-based technology. So they were not so specific. So in this case, if you understand that it has a RNA sequence. So wherever you want to mutate the genes are, and basically it's are you deletion or insertion. So it has a sequence, 20 uh, nucleotide sequence that we call guide RNA. So you have to generate the guide RNA and there is a protein called Cas protein. This Cas protein is our, the nickage. They cut the DNA, so they, have, they are called nickage. So they are fused together because this guide RNA also has a sequence to bind with the Cas9. So it makes a complex, the protein RNA complex, the, your guide RNA that is you want to target. So it fuses with the proteins and these are in a sequence, it will take this Cas complex to the target sequence. And this target sequence will bind to this. And this nickage, around three to four nucleotide, it will bind and it will cut the DNA. And this, it will cut, uh, create indulge. And after repair mechanism, the plants will um, the, it will rejoin and it will create the mutation. And the mutation are generally, it either it's a uh, homologous end joining or a heterologous end joining. So that is, is a little deep, means if you have a background, I think then it's easy to explain. But the thing is, I, I, in overview I can see is RNA-based technology and it make a complex and specifically since it's an RNA sequence, so it goes and directly bind to your mm -hmm. RNA sequence and it specifically create the mutation where you want. So yeah, so this is how it works. Means if any specific question related to CAS, so I can answer. If okay, few other students are also there, they want to ask question. Paki, you want to ask your question, you can ask directly. Paki, say. Paki, you ask question directly. Yes, you can ask your question. Unmute Un yourself. Un unmute yourself. Yes. 
गुड मॉर्निंग सर सर आई एम ऑडिबल यस सर जस्ट नो यू एक्सप्लेन अबाउट दिस पी टी ए डी जी जी यू एस दिस टेक्नोलॉजी सर वॉट इज द यूज ऑफ दिस टेक्नोलॉजी इन प्लांट बायो टेक्नोलॉजी एंड वॉट आर द एप्लीकेशन मीन्स आई जस्ट वॉन्ट टू आस्क हाउ डज दिस वर्क एप्लीकेशन हाउ कैन बी अप्लाई दिस yeah i think your voice is breaking but as far as i understand you are asking how yes, this uh, you are talking about course. the last part how this uh, floral ablation system works right that the the how it works and why it is used what purpose it is used for right yes sir yeah, your voice is breaking okay but anyway i think i got it right so if i told you these are the techniques i said if you want to create a sterile plants you want and in the beginning i was telling why you want to create sterile plants here i'm talking about the first thing the flower are the major source to contaminate if they are transgenic they are major source to contaminate the natural ecosystem the chances are more that by pollen because they produce lot of pollen it goes by air by insect by any other means so that they are main source to transfer or contaminate the natural system and other important thing as i was talking about the forestry and other things where flower are not required for commercial purposes because they are propagated vegetatively and flower these plants make like enormous amount of energy to make reproductive organ flower and these things because if you see especially in the temperate region where these plants have a very short time to grow growing phase like four month only so they grow like two months and the two months there is folks are doing this flower and these things so where this flowering is not required if you have a plant which does not make flower so all four months they can grow vegetatively they can more make, make biomass more wood so that has a more commercial value or the last part i was talking in the floral ablation so this is also like for when you can use like as a bioreactor you are producing some antibodies and some other uh, protein components in plant like in biotechnology if you are aware of industrial they are producing a lot of vaccines in the plants plant based vaccines and proteins so they don't need flowers so they are supposed it is expressed in the leaf or in the root so they don't need actually the flower they need plants which grow robustly fastly vegetative growth so where they need this kind of plants which don't waste energy making flower or any other plants which i said that contaminating our uh, natural ecosystem so in the other part of the question how to works so like one thing as i said if you target flowering in this particular case we are targeting flowering so you need a specific promoter promote if you understand promoter is the regulatory sequence of a gene so you have a functional gene and there is a sequence upstream of it which are in natural system that regulate the expression of these genes so that is called promoter so if you want and this is a suppose this is the gene in this case it's a toxic gene so if this gene get expressed specifically in the flower you need a promoter which regulate specifically in the flower these genes not in the other because there are other factors with this which make to express specifically in any particular tissue so this promoter particular promoter i am talking about this is a, a ptd promoter popular ptd promoter uh, that specifically it has been proven it's already known that it is press only in the flower and it has this i am shown as the example like this is a reporter gene when it a clone up downstream of this promoter and i said it has a specificity to express only in the flower not in any other plants 
So that means it needs some other components, partners that are expressed only in the leaf and in the flower. So it's expressed specifically in the flower. And when you have a reporter gene under this promoter, so you can see here it's expressing highly in the flower and maybe not expressing in the other parts. In the, some cases, there are some leaky expression. So that's uh, basically this disadvantage of this technique. So that's why nowadays people are preferred to use other biotechnological tools like CRISPR and this thing to target genes rather than this technique. But in some cases, it's important. So when you replace this gas and clone the toxic genes you have and make a transgenic plants like this, so if you see, these are the wild plants, wild type plants making nice flowers. And these plants, they are transgenic plants with a specific flower, a specific promoter, and they are not making any flower. Whereas the other developmental process are not affected. You see, they're growing normally. Here I took the another examples like this genes. This is not PTD promoter. Here is a constitutive promoter, 35S promoter. So in that case, it expressed these genes in everywhere, in every part of the plants. So it badly affected the other developmental, but it don't have flower, but it also, the developmental process arrested. Whereas in this case, where you have a specific flower, a specific promoter is create sterility only in the flower. It has abolished the flower development and apart from this, the plants are growing normally. Hope answer the question. Uh, there are a few more questions. I'll take one more question. Alok, you can ask a question. Okay. Uh, hello, sir. This is Alok. Actually, I'm working on the two pests of a plant, castor oil and the rice. Basically, my question is that can we use planting? Say it again. What you were working for? Uh, I am working on sir castor oil pest, Akia janata, okay. and uh, uh, this rice pest. Okay. And basically, my question is that can we use uh, planty bodies to overcome the uh, 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 overcome the uh, problem of uh, this uh, insect resistance? Ah, uh, means uh, I think I, I don't have any direct answer of this because I, I know, but I don't know any successful story about this, how people, they use this planty body to generate uh, the pest resistance in the plants. I mean, I, I, I have no idea. I mean, uh, I know that plenty of idea how it will work, but uh, I have no idea if there is any successful story about this and is it working or not. So I think I'm not the right person to, to, to answer this one. Okay, okay, sir. Okay, thank you. Okay, Anshuman, you can start your question you want to ask. So my question is that, sir, if uh, after mutation, the plant shows an harmful effect. Can it be replaced by working genes? So your question, can you repeat your question, please? It means if after mutation, the plant uh, shows uh, um, sort of harmful effects, can it be silenced mm -hmm. by mutations? Yeah, means in like when you do mutation, like when you were doing, always there is a chance to have some off target genes. So, there are several factors to have a very specific target and the genes. So, but it's still, when even when you're using CRISPR-Cas9 and other techniques, which are very specific, but yeah. it's still there are off targets. So in some cases, you may get some other uh, off target genes, which has a harmful effect on the plant development, or yeah. sometime, you the genes you are targeting suppose because it's not everything is known right so if you have a gene or you know that this has a particular role but suppose it's playing role in the flower development but you don't know that it also has a very important role in the root development yeah. and it's not known so when you target these genes 
so it will affect the flowering but at the same time it will also affect the root yeah that's so so that's a matter of investigation always in science means uh, you have to be open it's not like you a targeted flower and then you got something else so you leave it because it's always a matter of investigation so it could be also interesting thing okay then you can also find it okay it has another role but you have to investigate it and you can find another add another uh, value in it yeah and this is how it should go in science thank you sir okay thank you okay thank you uh shivani you can take your question now just wait i'll unmute you shivani kesri yes shivani you can ask your question a uh, good morning sir so my morning. question is that uh, if we have side effects uh, from the transgenic uh, plants so how mm -hmm. will be overcoming that uh to answer your question i think uh, we are in night zone here it's it's very early morning it's 12:30 12:20 here so i'm in night <laughs> for me it's not morning anyway it's night for me uh if it has a harmful effect because i was in uh, answering the previous question uh you have to Mm, you have to work and identify if it has a harmful effect. Suppose I was talking about biosafety, and the GMO plants has a, this. Uh, the bad, the most concern is like the people say that it may contaminate the environment and make us super weed and something which take over our natural uh, ecosystem or our agricultural crops. So these are the bad effects. So that's why I was talking how we should take as a scientist, we should also take always uh, extra precaution and make sure that there is a no transfer of the genes. And even if you are targeting some genes, manipulating some genes, and you have uh, some side effect, means have some abnormality. So it could be, as I was saying that it could be like, um, it affecting other development because it has some other role or uh, that we don't know or we are not targeted specifically and how to overcome because i was the major part was how to overcome the transfer of genes like i was talking about uh, but other other things you have to uh, study and add the value suppose uh, as I was saying that it has another role, so you have to find out and you may add some value in it. Okay, I guess. See, see, see any, any transgene, any uh, transgene, if you are incorporating uh, into other uh, species, uh, there is always a chance of, uh, you know, uh, changing of the behavior. Uh, because of uh, this small RNA which will produce somewhere because of this their unspecific behavior. Uh, so sometimes it is really difficult to control. Uh, but yes, as sir has said, uh, that we have to uh, try to keep minimum of target effect percentage so that uh, the other kind of effects uh, may not have, may not appear as, uh, as, a, as a very profound, you know, um, uh, visual effects and other kind of metabolic effects. So there is yeah. always a chance you can minimize, but you cannot eliminate fully. Yeah, I mean, so here I can add. Now I like I was talking about the CRISPR nine and why people are using so much CRISPR nine because of this is accuracy and the far robustness of this technique. So in this CRISPR Cas nine you have opportunity to select the reason where it don't match with the other genes. So this is the one way we can, you can minimize because there are several ways how you can select a specific target. So the more specific target you design, 
like in case of CRISPR, you can avoid any off target and any other uh, the disadvantage or bad effect of the, your mutation. You want to take more questions? No. I think okay. we should stop now, Roma. You know, enough okay. of the questions. You can write. Okay. okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, and no discussion with. So thank you, uh, Ajit sir, for accepting our invitation and uh, uh, sharing your ideas, research, and talk uh, to all to faculties available here and the students, obviously, uh, during these also as in the form of webinar. Uh, so thank you again, and uh, it's my pleasure. Uh, it's my pleasure. Thank you so much, Avino. So now I can leave the meeting, right? Thank you so much, sir, for coming. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. And it's truly an honor for me to join Avino. And thank you for Avino giving me this opportunity. I think I was running all day. I was running experiment. And <laughs> I came very late and it's a Ramzan is going on, so uh, after everything, I just thought, okay, now it's time, <laughs> let's do it. So I think, but it, I enjoyed really, I know I enjoyed and I appreciate your effort. You do, I think you are doing great job. I wish you all the best and okay. this guy get ahead of you. Know, we'll talk to you later. Thank you, sir. Okay, see you then. <laughs>